we get our training. Training in love, training in survival and being a certain way through the education of what we see, what we're encountering, what we're surrounded by, what we taste. And here I use terms like taste and food, not just in their grosser sense, in their actual material sense of food and sustenance, etc., and flavors, but also in how the person comes to think and be and understand the various layers of interpretation that one develops in himself or herself to understand the world and the world of experience. Here is where relationships really stand out. We grow through relationships. The relationship we have, of course, with our parents, if they're there. The relationship we have with our surrounding. And when we leave, or at least be exposed to the world outside of family nucleus, as in when we go to or start attending school or daycare or something like that, or play with the neighbor's kids, etc., that's adding more color to the palette, painting palette, where you have a different variety, new data, new information. So it's all going into the mental, emotional, psychological, internal Webster's Dictionary that you carry with you. You constantly are adding more data. Now, if that data is flawed, and you don't have any other resource to compare it to, to identify the flawed nature of it, and you, basically you don't have sufficient information to cross-reference or, you know, you believe it. You take it unquestioningly. You accept it. And that is what is quite dangerous to happen for a person. In the old days, in older uh, you know, tribes, to this day there are some tribes, some, hopefully there are some places in the world where the tradition of having the child grow up within the village, meaning by so many other adults around, Everybody having their own training freely provided to this child growing up. In the case of a boy, for example, this, this you see in, in tribes in places like in Africa and other regions uh, where old customs are kept. In the Middle East, in the olden days, in, uh, uh, in the Caucasus, um, in Iran, and other places, people, the child, for example, the boy, would be uh, taught different skills by the different um, artisans and, and uh, professionals, because it would be a big family. So in places like, uh, in, in certain, certain tribes in Africa, the child would be getting a 
a glimpse at a different world with each individual, uh, let's say, uh, father figure. So it wouldn't be just one father. It would be several, quote-unquote, fathers training this child. So the child would come out quite chiseled, perfected in a sense, as a child, as an adolescent. So at that point, if you take that adolescent and place them in difficult situations, they already have many, many more skill sets than an actual mature adult living, with degrees, by the way, with education, living in any major uh, Western society, in what we call, you know, first world. situation. You can put them right next to that and they would still outsmart them, outdo them in various skill sets. Why? Because they've had the training. People today don't have the training that we did a few generations ago. So, a female would be getting the same training in, in her right, in her, uh, you know, being taught by all the women in the tribe. Imagine the wealth that she, does, she gets. But especially the one that stands out within the tribe, within the village. And you see this in every, um, every old culture, especially in places like in South American tribes and, and Amazon and other places, in Central, uh, Central America, etc., uh, and other Native American or Indian uh, cultures, where it is the spiritual head, the shaman, the religious head of the tribe, to whom everyone's eyes turn. Because that person becomes the interpreter of the otherworldly experiences that they undergo, that they experience in life, as well as the difficulties in life, even relationship advice, what they don't see. Such a person would be getting so much training from different elders. Today we don't have elders. Let's say it like it is. We have substituted elders some time ago by taking it away from the truly elder uh, population uh, and this has been spreading like wildfire during the last 50, 60, 70 years. We took it away from the elders of the family, of the community, and we passed it on to the educational institutions, which are standardized, which are controlled by all those who uh, basically regulate these schools, these universities, these big-time universities, Be, the, the standardization of different disciplines, for example. So what ended up happening, they strategically had us move from looking to our elders for advice, and instead, we started looking at our own educational facilities and the professors and um, educators, in a sense, with the book knowledge that they had. Some of them might have been, in the old days, might have had some, you know, actual real-life experience, as in the case of anthropology, etc. 
the human sciences or social sciences. But all that has shifted now. During the last 30 years or so, basically uh, in, in our lifetime, that has even uh, gone because now those professors, they don't know what's going on. They have no clue because the rug has been pulled from under them. And that old generation of professors that had replaced the true elders of society where the social credence or the um, the trust that society was now placing was no longer the true heritage carriers, legacy carriers, the elders of our societies. They were the mortar and brick institutions and the paid individuals in them. The professors, this and that. And on the other hand, you had also the politicians, etc., which you still do. But, um, and of course, sports characters and celebrities, completely empty characters. Empty. Self serving characters. You see, if the elder in a tribe did not treat that child with so much love and, and care by giving him or her the wealth that he or she possessed to begin with, that, he ha that had reached him, now him being an elder, but all that legacy that was carried over from generations past to him. He was passing it on to this child, the training, which we don't have today. For that, you need to go to books, not Google, not definitely not the media, because it's so pathetic because I see this still People in the world still look upon the news anywhere in the world. I've lived on several different continents in my lifetime. Different cultures, diverse cultures. And it's shocking to see how grown adults look at the news as if it is a window to reality to truth, to what is really going on. You see this in the West. You see this in the United States. You see this in European countries. You see this in, well, everywhere. Everybody is ready to believe the choice they made in listening to one channel, one TV, or one website, one browser that they trust. See, human beings didn't need to trust blindly. Now, that child was getting something from the adult. The mother and the other mothers were training this child by giving him attention, by giving him love. The father was showing the child, not just one father, but all the men in the tribe become the fathers of this child. And when each of them is showing him how to hold a tool, how to work something, they hold his hand and they grab it they show him how to hold the spear as if his life depends on it, as if it's an extension of his own body. So there is this resoluteness, this determined
taking that risk attitude, applying himself attitude, truthfulness was there, authenticity, being genuine was there. Today, how can you be genuine by clicking a mouse? Hmm? By listening to or watching uh, some app out there. I don't know whether it's Facebook, TikTok, 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 something. The news. You hanging your future upon this politician, that politician, listening to these news people giving you the foundation upon which to stand to make up your mind about your future instead of telling you well we don't know and everyone is an expert right see the adults would give the child the training which is again as i mentioned it's all about relations relationship it's very relational there was a lot of growth in the right brain of the individual a lot of non-linear connections you're thinking yes the box is there you know what's inside the box but you're thinking outside the box when necessary to look at the whole picture Today, we have become bona fide dumb people in the world. We are quite stupid in probably, I don't know, in documented history. Never has it been a time where you had this much of a collective of dumb people with degrees while driving cars, fancy cars, especially electric cars. So, and you carry this into the relationships with each other. Today, families are in shambles. They're, they're just like, really, where is a healthy family? They've ruined they are continuously trying to ruin the future generations of human beings by creating a schism in the minds of children by saying, well, uh, you know, male and female, yeah, but at birth, yeah, but if you want, you can go ahead and use your magic eraser and change that into something else that you like. How We have stooped so low in our stupidity that we're giving and lending an ear to such an argument being made instead of tossing them out into the trash can these people and all of the medical community whoever support this kind of debacle making billions and billions of dollars operating on these children they should be criminal treated as such how can a child make up their mind well, when there's money involved? How can there be male, female, and other? What is that other? What are you, stupid? All these people who make up all this nonsense, I ask them simply, in a way it's, it's a dare, I guess, if they can, let them dare to take this male, female, and other advocacy thing to the Middle East. Hmm? Let them take this to China. Let them take this to anywhere other than the Western, the Western world, in a sense, and see how they treat how they get treated. Or when they're hungry, I wonder which gender of theirs is going to pop out and says, could you give me some food? Because then you're going to drop back down to the most basic parts of humanity. This is all psychological contamination. 
sociological contamination. This is emotional contamination. And humanity is dying. And they know, they know what they're doing, of course. So, training is what we go through. So now, unlike what we had a few generations ago, as I was saying, what you have today is a different kind of training, which is what I was mentioning the other day. It's the de-evolution, going backwards. And it's not like going backwards to uh, you know, we are unlearning some bad habits. No. The sad part is university professors, professionals, individuals who are supposed to, who basically took away, stole away the torch of wisdom from the elders of humanity, claiming that they have the knowledge. The university, the educational world had more expertise, had the skill set, to raise the future human populations. That was a big promise, which they have failed miserably. Today's politicians, today's religious leaders, who say one thing and then go, go and do something else, they live in opulence. They are basically the mouthpieces of rulers and kings and politicians. Let's call them out the way they are basically, what's really happening. These individuals have misled and are misleading still humans, the humans of the future. Because there is this training, toxic training that's going on. And the attention has to be placed on the language the language we are exposed to. And whatever you are exposed to, what media you are exposed to, not just, let's say, news media, any method, it could be old time, you know, just newspapers. It could be the type of books you read, whether they're ebooks or actual books, or the news pieces that you watch or documentaries you watch, audiobooks you listen to, etc. They are trying to and have been influencing for the last couple of generations, at the very least, human beings to think in a certain way. That's how they have created this divide, huge divide between men and women. That's how they came up with toxic masculinity, with feminism. Well, go tell that to the healthily functioning tribe where everything is so cohesive. The child is growing up in that juicy, vibrant, nourishing atmosphere. They're getting training there in that healthy environment of a mother and a father. Now you have society that's that's not even wanting to acknowledge the fact that mothers exist. They want to take away language, right? You take away, you pollute, you play around with the language. Soon enough, you're going to play around, and they're all connected, with the psychology, the way people think. I saw this about, um, I guess, I noticed some things when I was a teenager in the 80s uh, and on because uh, I was trying to practice speaking English and whatever channels we had available or if we had a TV at the time or power electricity to watch it with or car battery which we used to use <laughs> back in the day in Lebanon. I used to notice uh, American uh, and British uh, sitcoms and things like that and that I would I would practice my English through those shows and things and I began to see a pattern where men were being presented as brutes 
violent, stupid, clumsy, dumb. And women were presented as the more austere, the more sensible presence in the family. The one to really go to, to get real, genuine advice, reason, rationale, basically, was not to be found in the dad who was basically very brash and very, you know, childish, childlike, a big baby. And then you see this all to this day. Just, just look at any ads out there where you're being presented with a family. And look, you, you saw this in sitcoms in the 90s and things. I remember because I used to watch some of them and I would get really surprised at, you know, the guy is always dumb. And the woman is coming in to save the day, including commercials. So this day, they still pull this off. So what you have is basically generations of human beings who grew up thinking that that is already the way it is. So now that person who's no longer a child, no longer an adolescent, they're an adult. They're going to look at the person, the opposite sex, in a certain way. Expecting a certain level. Why? Because that is the training they received. They've convinced us that marriage is a bad idea. How so? Well, they just tell you to look at the numbers. I mean, I know the numbers, and uh, you know, for years, you know, uh, I used to be a couples therapist after all, family therapist, individual therapist. So I knew what was happening. Plus, I have eyes, I have ears, I am a witness to human, the human condition around me. So I would see, yes, the validity of these things. But nobody would tell you that the uh, narratives with which we work with which we come to the table, the relationship was all crooked. The pieces are, they don't match. They don't, they're wrong. They're the wrong pieces. What pieces? The educational training was wrong. We have to say it like it is. And they're still doing this. They're still pulling this. These blinders over us, over our eyes, not to see. That a child needs a father. That a child needs a mother. Not a birth parent. Okay? We have to be able to stand. We have to be very categorical about certain things, yes. Certain things. But that clarifies so much. So wrong information. Uh, some time ago, a person had asked, and uh, we did a recording on nutrition, right? So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned about the food pyramid that they introduced in 1977 or 79, 76, something like that. And since then, the rate of diabetes in America, in the United States, has, in North America, actually, has skyrocketed. Bread, sugar, starches. Carbs, basically. Carbohydrates. Eat those, eat those. They introduced also the breakfast as the healthiest meal of the day. And then they introduced three meals a day. And then they introduced snacking. Now, there's a reason why I'm bringing this in. Talking about this is because wrong training, wrong education, wrong for whom? For us, the people. Not the people who are making money, those select elites 
that are benefiting from this because their children will never touch the sugar that your child is going to eat. Their child is never going to go to the type of schools where they give a type of education where your children are exposed to, that your children are exposed to. They never will hear the toxic things that your child unfortunately has to hear and believe and subscribe to. Why? Because they know better. Well, we can too, because you need to do some research and realize, for example, the food pyramid that they presented was actually lopsided, upside down, because it only benefits those people who make money off of your sickness, off of your death, off of your long sickness, which means a lot of money is going to be made over you losing your health. So take ownership of your health and live a better life, not a miserable one. How? By retraining yourself. Developing a new relationship with yourself and a new relationship with those around you. Not everyone has come from a healthy family. Not everyone is living in a healthy uh, tribe like the ones I mentioned where values are still somewhat intact, where the child can receive the precious training that I was mentioning and referring to. But, at least now as an adult, we're talking about this after all, right? So this information is being put out there. People have this information. So you start working on this, on yourself, to change the narrative. Change, throw away, in fact, the tools that you've been given. It's just rubbish. It's complete garbage. If it doesn't work to improve and better your condition, better your, the quality of your heart, your mind, and especially your relationships with others, including your significant other. Learn what it means to love. And if you don't know, don't say, I do know, and carry over the legacy that was left behind in you, downloaded in you, uh, and carry that over. Let's say if you come from a toxic family environment, most of us nowadays, unfortunately, come from such families. But that doesn't mean that you need to carry that legacy. You can always update your information. Toss away those old tools that don't work and adopt new ones. There's nothing wrong. So long as you're alive, you have a brain, you have intuition, you have the capacity to imagine. It's time for you to imagine yourself a new future. And this is already you started to retrain yourself. And this is where we get back onto the evolution trail. We start we continue evolving, not de-evolving. And just to um, um, connect back to the theme of nutrition, don't eat carbs when you know that it's, it's suicide. You are killing yourself if you turn your food intake mostly to come in from carbs, carbohydrates, sugars, starches, bread, rice, all these things. Minimize them, minimize them, and make them a small portion if you have to, compared to the fat and protein. Our ancestors didn't need or didn't have Snickers bars hanging from trees, nor did they have strawberries growing every time of the year everywhere. Those were treats every once in a while, very, like every once in every blue moon. Most of the time they were eating protein, actual protein, and fats. In fact, fats are even more uh, prized and valuable for the body. 
and see what happens. You will lose that belly. Again, uh, <laughs> I am not a nutritionist. I'm not a medical doctor. However, this is common sense. Do your own due diligence and take ownership of your life by at least retraining yourself. So first, have a relationship that is better than what you were exposed to. Or at least it was, if it was great training from your parents, from the world around you, okay, at least match that. Okay, at least match it in its goodness, in its uh, greatness, in its wonderful qualities that it left you with. And if it weren't that good, and you didn't have the best of trainings in upbringing, relationships, emotional growth, psychological growth, skill sets, granting all that, then you can always give yourself you can teach yourself new skills. Close the laptop, close the phone, put it in your purse, put it in your wallet, and look over your shoulder, look over across from you actually, and say hello to someone. When you're sitting at a park, when you're sitting at a cafe, or at least smile to them. Greet the person who's serving you in the restaurant or at the train station, or in the bus. Hold the door for someone, whether you're a woman or a man. Learn to say it's okay. It's temporary. In Buddhism, we call it anicca, impermanent. And that always is a blessing to know, to hear, that all things are impermanent, including the suffering that the world is going through. Because all this, nothing stays. It's all transitory. The good and the bad. And we are going through a very bad period in human history. Yes, fine, okay, I get it, right? But... It's impossible for the unwholesome to dominate. It's impossible for the unskillful to dominate. It's impossible for the immoral to dominate, for the unethical to dominate forever. They come and go. And the world is now in a very unethical, immoral state. Values are topsy-turvy. There is no virtue. On TV, there's no virtue on uh, in, in whatever you're seeing. I mentioned the other day about the Olympics and, and all that. There is none. There's like they're pushing the boundaries to become more and more disgusting, satanic. And they're unafraid. They're not afraid to display themselves, throwing symbols left and right. They have no clue what these things are. They just copying each other. It's like a downward spiral. It's like a locomotive heading straight to the abyss. And it's getting faster and faster. In the 80s, I used to listen to 70s, 80s, not 70s, well, they, they're a band from the 70s. But there's a band, I think they're still around, ACDC. It had a song called Highway to Hell. That's what we are in right now. It's it's like a train that's uh, headed down a road straight to hell. Well, you can exit anytime. You can exit that. And that, the way to do that, the way I see it, is by taking ownership of your life and saying, no thanks, I'm out. And by saying that, you have to take steps to retrain yourself. By getting the right information into your head, by dwelling on thoughts that are not instigated by what you're watching, the news, the media, the 
uh, skewed documentaries with agendas like in Netflix and, and things like that, um, from what I remember. Um, but if it was like that some time ago, it's still like that and maybe even worse today. So take ownership with re-educating yourself. And re-education does not mean you have to read books, okay? Uh, just getting up early in the morning, going out for a walk. Okay? When, uh, and greet the sun. Look at the sun when it's up. Take off your shoes, take off your socks every once in a while and stand on a patch of grass that, you know, first check to see if there's no beer bottles or crushed, you know, shards of glass or anything like that. So think wisely, of course, think rationally, common sense, and let your, the bottom of your feet touch the ground. Did you know that the pores of skin underneath your feet are at their biggest size, basically, compared to the other pores, the, your skin is the biggest organ in your body. It breathes through the pores of the skin, the holes in the skin. But they are at, they're the biggest underneath your feet. To absorb more energy, to absorb more life, already you're educating yourself. Go make yourself, I don't know, tea or something, or and just sit there on a porch or or just walk back home or just go down the stairs and come back up if that's what you have turn off the tv sit quietly if you want put some music that's calm that's calming or listen to the best music listen to your heartbeat lay on your back Place your hands on your belly and just walk gently, uh, placing them there. And just gently observe how the inhale fills up your belly and the exhale empties it out. And just there's that tiny little cadence, that, that the rhythm, natural. And a few of those already you're so calm. Today's society is not being taught to be calm. We are very anxious. We don't have to be. So control what you are exposing yourself to. Only the best training and nothing less. The best training in love, in learning how to recognize love, in learning how to recognize respect. Make sure people are respecting you and you're also respecting them back, obviously. And don't be afraid to correct others when they misinterpret or misconstrue what you're saying or what you are or who you are, what you're doing with your life. But ultimately, your job is not to change anyone's mind. It is just to change yours and to live a better life with however much time we have, each of us, on this planet. And that teaches us to also be humble with ourselves and continuously grow. And already you are making yourself, turning yourself into one of those elders I mentioned. And humanity will regain back the legacy of the elderly. Once you've taken good care of your health, nutrition, education, both emotional, psychological, as well as physical, of course. And humanity will remain in good hands. So this would be like a bad episode that we passed beyond. So retrain yourself relationally to understand your role with yourself, to yourself, and the world. There's always room for growth. You hold the key.